Wonderful. Are you, can I take care of that? Did I just say continue? I need Carlos. He's the one who did all that for me. It's good to see you this morning. Uh, on this July 11th, we're going through this summer so quickly. Today for our worship leaders, we've got Vern as the assisting minister. Um, Dorothy is our reader. Andrea, you are our responder. Our musicians are Gary, Jerry, and Dennis, and Dale, and we have a special guy here with, and it's going to be wonderful. Kendall, can you stand and wave at everyone? This is Kendall Bacchus. You know, Gary always brings these incredible guests to play or to sing for us today. I think he's just playing today. It's going to be shepherd of my heart. Zoomers, unless you're instructed to, or you are leaving the mic, or <laughs> leaving in the service, your mic should be off. As always, we'll participate in Holy Communion today, so gather all your elements and everything that you need. Um, next Sunday, for those of you who are in the building, we are going to have the altar rails put back up and we're gonna do communion at the rails again. Um, there'll be slight differences, but hardly noticeable. And for our, um, for, uh, we got someone to come on, coming on. And for those of you on Zoom, nothing's changed. We'll do it exactly the same. So you'll need to find your elements. We'll just, um, <laughs> we're still being recorded. <laughs> anyway. Oh, oh dear, that's okay. We'll fix it. Um, I checked them. Anyway, but I can't ever stay on track. But we're going to not worry about communion. We're just going to let it happen in the very beautiful way that it normally does. Those of you at home, please put your elements together. And at church, you won't have to use these little packets anymore. I'm sure you're sad about that. Um, and while the, the people in the building are communing, we'll have Gary play us some songs or a hymns or something to keep us, keep those of you on, on Zoom busy. I want to thank everyone for coffee time last time. Man, that was fun. Dorothy, what's going on? I smell coffee. What's going on in there today? Uh, I think coffee is magic. Oh, magic treats. It's so wonderful. So the one thing we were... <laughs> okay. Um, the one thing we were sort of wondering since we had such a lovely potluck last Sunday, Yeah, her voice is gone. Yes, that's just what I was going to ask you about. What about the picnic? Dorothy, you're muted. Oh, oh. No. Oh, no. He muted you. Dor Dorothy, you're muted. Okay, I'll try it again. There, finally. Okay. There you go. All right. I will start again. <laughs> We did have a lovely uh, spread last Sunday, and since it was first Sunday, we won't have a potluck Sunday, uh, the 18th, I think it is, of this month, which is traditional third Sunday in August. We will have our more traditional potluck Sunday, third Sunday, and then the third Sunday in September, we are reserved to go to Sequoia Park. And I told the gal when I was making the reservations, the history of this church, how they did the picnics during World War II, because there wasn't a place for military to come and meet people. And so our church was designated for that reason to invite the military that were here during World War II. And that's when the church decided to go from Norwegian to English. Up until the time of World War II, the services were in Norwegian. And so this lady just thought that was the most exciting thing that our church is now back at Sequoia Park where we it were is. during World War II. That is just wonderful. And I'm so glad that we're all doing that. I wonder, we, have a, we didn't do introductions yesterday or last Sunday. Maybe we can do it again because that gives us kind of knowledge of who's here. I think Ursula just walked in. So you must not forget her. So today, yes, this is just wonderful. Today we've got Dick and Andrea on Zoom, and we've got Marie Beaver. She is around somewhere, and Mark is there all the way from Texas. Penny there from she's my sister, by the way, and I mentioned her in the in the sermon today. 
um, she, <laughs> she and I have always gotten in a lot of trouble. And she, she um, is in Longview, Washington. There is Anne. She is in Sacramento, and it's very hot there today. She looks nice and cool in there right now. Yes, Peggy and Tom are here. They also are in the hot box that is Sacramento. And there's Vic, and there is Beverly. Always so glad to see you. So we are all in force today. So who do we have in the facility? Wow, <laughs> we have a good sized group. So I will try and get everybody uh, uh, introduced. Jerry, um, Pat Panay, Kay Paris, Kay Ames, Carl and Carol. Oh, you moved. <laughs> <laughs> we have Sandy and Carol and they're trying to confuse me. <laughs> and then over here we have Rick, Darcy and Bob and going back to the, I have to go to the next row, right? And then we have our musician, uh, Dale and Renee and Mike. <laughs> and then our last, oh no, we still have another. We have um, <laughs> Kent and Marsha. And of course, way in the back there, we have Ursula. And we're so glad to see job. her. Thank she you. has finally joined Let's us. Let's give ourselves a hand, man. Well, it really is amazing to have such a large congregation meet at this time because that it's just not happening everywhere. And it's just a testimony to who you guys are. And I am so pleased to be with you in the facility and online with all of you, Ms. and Mr. Zoomers. So we're going to begin our worship. Oh, I should say something about our food, food drive. We're, we're getting um, lots of food for our food drive for Eureka Rescue Mission and also contributions. Thank you, Marie. Um, we will now begin with the special opening music by Gary. My goodness, so beautiful. Thank you, Gary. The greeting and the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
and also with you. Uh, continuing with our gathering hymn, God of grace and God of glory. Thank you. A glory on your people for your power. Crown your ancient church's story. Bring its birth to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage. confession and forgiveness. Those of you who are in person here worshiping, if you're able, why don't we stand? We haven't done that for a while. It's a major part of our worship story as service. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness. Let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our creator. In you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our heart through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of almighty God, Christ died for us while we still were sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our um, hymn of praise standing as well. It's just a closer walk with thee. <clears throat> just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Close to thee, 
Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with me. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. This world of toil and snares. If I falter, Lord, who cares? Oh, with me your burden shares. None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Is my plea daily walking close to thee? Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no more. To thy shore, just a closer walk with me. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be. <laughs> Thank you. I could keep on we listening to that. One, that was gorgeous. We're continuing now with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we be defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. It's time for special music by Jerry. Today, we're doing a medley of three pieces, My Lord and I, a poem, Take the Name of Jesus with You, a poem, and Ancient Words, a poem. Dennis and Jerry are muted, you know. the 
I do not know any of that, any of those songs. That was really good. They're just we wonderful at picking these out. This time for readings. Dorothy is our reader today. Uh, 
Um, one little change that we'll have today, since I'm reading and I can't control the remote, um, we won't be hearing the uh, responder, Andrea. So after when we are reading the psalm responsibly, when I start, stop, you will just start like we did when we were in church. I don't know how else to do that, but I think it'll work out fine. Okay, the first reading is from Amos 7, 7 through 15. Amos was not the kind of prophet attached to temples or royal courts. Rather, he was an ordinary farmer from Judah, the southern kingdom, called by God to speak to Israel, the northern kingdom. God's word of judgment through Amos conflicted with the king's court's prophet Amaziah, whom Amos encountered at Bethel. A reading from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jerob Jeroboam, of Israel saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house. <laughs> Sorry, I just lost my place. <laughs> of Israel, the land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesize there, but never again prophesize at Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesize in my people from Israel, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. The second reading is from Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. In Jesus, all of God's plans and purposes have been made known as heaven and earth are united in Christ. Through Jesus, we have been chosen as God's children and have been promised eternal salvation. A reading from Ephesians. Bless thee the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy, and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasures of his will, to the pra praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he has set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time, Dorothy, we gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him, 
who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The Thanks be Lord. to God. Thanks be to God. Dale is coming up. He is going to play for us today special music by Dale. Good morning. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired. I am weak, I am worn Through the storm, through the night Lead me on through the light Take my hand, precious Lord Lead me home Precious Lord, lead me near. My life is almost gone. In the river I will stand. Guide my feet, hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord. storm through the night take my hand through the light lead me on precious lord lead me home Notice my guitar stuff, woodstock is uh, right in the middle of the picture there, right? <laughs> This is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for you. May your soul grow deep. May your joy run. heart know the face of mercy has smiled 
May your faith come to let you believe like a child. This is my prayer for you. May your peace be an anchor in stormy tides. May your hope run like a river that never runs dry. May your burdens grow light. May your worries subside. This is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for you. fun to have Deo back in person, wasn't it? That was just amazing. And what an incredible song. Thank you. I think it's my new favorite. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said it's Elijah, and others said it's a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John and bound him, put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John. And he was righteous and holy man, and he would, protected him. And Herod heard John had been, was greatly perplexed. And yet Herod liked to listen to John. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests and the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. So she went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? Her mother replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, the daughter rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier to the with of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. That's a dreadful story. Yes, a dreadful story. But the Bible records several horror stories. These are often called texts of terror. As you know, this broken world can get off kilter and bad stuff happens. Scripture reflects that reality. The Old Testament horror story includes the killing of Jephthah's daughter, the rape of Tamar. New Testament's terrifying texts include the slaughter of the innocents, Today's account of the beheading of John the Baptist, not to mention 
the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus. This is the stuff of nightmares. Too many of us have suffered, so we recognize the horrors of a world off kilter. And we yearn for joy. In truth, we've experienced pure joy, the joy of one another and fellowship, the joy of the Lord. I'm going to go way off track here. What about the joy of pottery? Decades ago, my sister Penny and I attended a beginning pottery class at the local junior college. Not surprisingly, Penny was amazing at it. She's such an artist, but I know it's so much. I don't like to get my hands dirty. So I quit, I quit the class. Though I failed, and I did at creating a pot, I learned a lot about the joy of it. Maybe it's this joy that makes the analogy of God as a potter so meaningful. This analogy is used throughout the Bible. In Genesis, we hear that God, like a potter, took clay and formed a human being. In Isaiah 64, God's people rejoiced in that, and for they declared, Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. We can imagine in the beginning, God, like a potter, took that clay of creation, added water to soften it. Hundreds of years later, St. Paul described God, our potter, as renewing and cleansing us with the washing of the word. Well, back to that pottery class so long ago, my sister and I learned that after being softened by water and kneaded by hand, the clay would be ready to be formed. The potter would round the clay into a ball and throw the pot, meaning the potter would literally smack the rounded clay onto the middle of a potter's wheel in that process, hoping it would find its center and become a pot. That's not unlike God's people living in this broken world, hoping we find our center. Otherwise, we know we won't have purpose or direction. If that happened to a thrown pot, being off center, I mean, the pot would push, or the potter would push and pull the clay, work it, hoping to find the center eventually. If not, the pot was trashed. Like the potter. God pushes you and me through his love and mercy and grace so that we may live fully as he intended. But God's people have always, in some way, failed that intention. We heard about one horrific failure in today's text of terror for 2,000 years ago. Herod, he was a king of the Israelites. Those were God's chosen people. And he really liked the preaching of John, who was uh, Israel's last prophet. But he didn't like or didn't want to take John's words to heart. Instead, he was influenced by those horrible words of his wife and stepdaughter who hated John and wanted him to die. And to please them, Herod had God's prophet killed. Certainly in a terrifying way, Herod failed. But truthfully, all of us, all people fail one time or another. And Jesus knew that. In the next chapter of Mark, chapter 7, Jesus said, This people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You know, sometimes in our lives of faith, you and I center on other things that don't matter. So during this it was a time of struggle still, this transition time, this odd post-COVID time. It's hard to find our center. So let's not allow any disagreements that could divide us or debates, which could distract us from what's important. But what really matters, what really matters is that God loves you and me and that God saves us. Also, what matters is our response to such unearned grace by living out his intention for us and by serving him and others through our words 
and our actions. We face a new world in which institutions, including churches, are failing. We're needed in this broken world that God loves so much. So let's heed God the potter's pushing and pulling of us as we adapt to this unusual time with its ever-increasing challenges. Let's continuously remind one another of who we are and whose we are. For you and I are baptized people of God, and we belong to him. Let's center our words and our deeds and mostly our hearts on God and his call to make his love known. You're pretty good at that, Jimmy. We answer God's call by placing Jesus, the son of God, who lived, died, and rose again for us at the center of everything. So let's do that. Let's listen to our Lord's word, participate in worship and sacrament, and answer God's call to serve others. Finally, as we live in this off-kilter world, our heart will easily become misshapen. Yet God the potter promises to renew us with the splash of water, to feed us with bread and wine, to enliven us with the glory of the cross and to form us again and again and again with his loving potter's hand. So we ask our Lord, this potter, to push and pull us so we may find our center as individuals and families of faith on God who is the Father, Jesus who is the Son, and the Holy Spirit who whispers faith to us. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn for today is Faith of Our Fathers. Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Growing in faith and discipleship, we give thanks for God's merciful compassion as we pray to the church, the world, and all in need. God of truth, put your word of justice on our lips. Bless your church in the task of holy resistance. Make us a living and persistent sign of your righteousness and your loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, pour your healing power on our fragile earth for us and for all who will inherit it. Inspire the work of engineers and environmentalists who see sustain sustainable sources of energy and food and clean water. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of justice, hold your plumb line to the nations. Speak convicting words of holy judgment to those in positions of, of authority. Redeem all harms caused by corruption and the hunger for power. Restore peace to our world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. God of salvation, bring wholeness to all your beloved children. Anoint the hands of all caregivers, nurses, doctors, therapists, hospice workers, and chaplains. Bring abundance of life to all who long for healing, especially those on our prayers concerns list. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray today for all of our members and friends, especially today. We pray for Cliff and Julianne, Robert, uh, Marcia, Jeff, Susan, Dale, Lee, and Gloria, as well as our members and friends serving us in the military and our partners in ministry, our new bishop, uh, as well as the churches in our area. Lord, hear our Lord, prayer. in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of the saints, you have claimed the faithful departed as your own and given them an inheritance in glory. Sustain us in faith until the fullness of time when you gather up all things in heaven and on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we lift to you these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your everlasting love and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please gather the elements for communion. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. Sin hath scoffed the world with sense. World, you sent your son to heal our ills, Please to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. 
broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please eat of the bread. Body of Christ given for you. Please lift the cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Please drink of the cup. Blood of Christ, shed for you. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come oh, to on. the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now it's time for special music by our guest musician, Kendall Walker.
Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Go stand up. Thank you. Yay. Good and bubble. Thank you. This was, you enraptured us. That was just absolutely fantastic. Thank you for coming today. I am just so honored. Bless you. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll continue with the sending hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving. Praise and thanksgiving, God we would offer for all things living you have made good. Harvest of sown fields, fruits of blessing. May the Lord Almighty, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Postlude by Gary.
go in peace. May God's love know. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Yeah, I had lots of help with cat this morning. Go in peace, make God's love known. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Amen. 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 <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I can't hear you. Where's the volume on this thing? I don't know. The volume is in the I, yeah, I have to unmute. So there you are. How are you guys? <laughs> oh, pretty good. You have a good week. No one wants to talk to me. Oh, I am so sad. I did all of this and no one's talking. Kenny, how are you? I'm not going to hear them. Okay. Then. Oh, man, I tell you. Good morning, everyone. Okay. We can hear you now, too. You were muted for a while. Oh man, that's a great idea is not coming to fruition. No, this is great. We're really thankful for everybody mm -hmm. behind the scenes and for you too. Okay. Thanks for stopping. All right. <laughs> we can't do this every week, so I, we're gonna have to do something different. Okay. Well, bye guys. You have a great week. Thank you too. Bye, -bye. bye everybody. Bye-bye.